David Wolf claims that he is the real manager of pop sensation Cyndi Lauper, a claim also upheld by one Captain Lou Albano. The controversy surrounding who actually manages Cyndi Lauper has led to a challenge from Lauper herself to Captain Albano, a challenge that has been accepted. Tonight on Tuesday Night Titans, David Wolf adds fuel to the fire of controversy. Thank you for tuning in to another special episode of Tyler Vance Rants. I am your host, Tyler Vance himself. It is July 3rd, 1984. Last week, Mr. Wonderful's day off of relaxation was ruined by ineptitude. Jesse the Body Ventura outlined his goals of becoming the next WWF World Heavyweight Champion, and the Polish power Ivan Putski gave us a little taste of his homeland. As usual by now, Vince McMahon and Lord Alfred Hayes are the hosts of Tuesday Night Titans, and they start the episode off by taking us down memory lane. On January 23rd, 1984, as you may or may not know, Hulk Hogan defeated the Iron Sheik to become the current WWF World Heavyweight Champion. I did a special episode about that whole event, which you should check out, so I will link it in the description down below. After reliving the footage of that momentous moment, we are brought back to the present day, where Mean Gene Okerlund is interviewing Hulk Hogan. And all Mean Gene wants to know is what the Hulkster's thoughts are on Jesse Ventura's last week's goals of becoming the next WWF World Heavyweight Champion. All Hulk Hogan has to say in regards to that is, it is only a matter of time before the two of them meet each other in the ring head to head. To finish the interview off, Hulk Hogan compares the feeling that Mean Gene got when he first proposed to his wife to the love affair that he currently has with us, the WWF fans. I know you're a rambling man, and all your life you looked around, and finally you found that special woman, man. And when I saw the people of the Twin Cities, it was an instant love affair. Gross. We're then treated to a match joined in progress between Hulk Hogan himself and Dr. D, David Schultz. The thing about this match is that Hulk Hogan is already bleeding so profusely that they can't quite possibly show that on primetime TV, so all we get to see instead is a big blue box censoring it. See, don't worry, modern day wrestling fans. Even back in the 80s, Vince McMahon was making questionable decisions on his programming. Dr. Schultz then hits Hulk Hogan from the second rope with his diving elbow finisher, scoring a near fall. But the Hulkster fights back, going to town on the doctor, including biting him in the face. And now he's biting the doctor! Disqualification? Hello? Disqualification? Oh, how silly of me. Of course the referee isn't going to disqualify Hulk Hogan. Hulkamania is running wild, brother! Since the match is allowed to continue, Hulk Hogan drops his own elbow on Dr. D. David Schultz, but instead of going for the full three count, stops the count at two, deciding to deliver more punishment to the doctor. What did he ever do to you, Hulk? More punishment is meted out on the doctor, eventually leading to Hulk Hogan dropping his atomic leg drop on Dr. Schultz, but once again interrupts the referee's count to dish out even more punishment. What are you doing, Hulk Hogan? The match goes outside of the ring, and Dr. D even gets his head smashed into the ring post and begins to bleed as well. It begs the question, are we going to be able to see any kind of action here, or is the screen just going to be completely filled up with blue squares? A chair is the next item on Hulk Hogan's list of objects that aren't allowed to be used in a wrestling match that, you guessed it, he uses against Dr. D. David Schultz. Open, wide open. Hulk now with a chair. Oh. I'm thinking that ECW honored the rules of professional wrestling more than this guy. Once finally back in the ring, Hulk Hogan does as much damage as he can to the gushing wound that is now on Dr. D. David Schultz's head. Unfortunately for the Hulkster, he experiences a minor setback, allowing the doctor to go up to the top rope in an attempt to hit his diving elbow finisher. But the doctor misses, and moments later, Hulk Hogan comes away with the 1-2-3 following a clothesline. 
And I think Schultz got what he deserved. Excuse me, but what are you the lord of again? Kissing? But always bear in mind Hogan is a fantastically scientific wrestler also. The first guest to be interviewed on Tuesday Night Titans is a fellow Canadian. And while you may know him simply as The Butcher, I know him as Paul Vachon. According to Monsieur Vachon, he can sing really well. And so Vince McMahon asked him to demonstrate his skill. Conveniently for the Frenchman, there is a live band nearby. So he heads over. What chops. Ivan Putsky, take note. Not only can Paul Vachon cut you to pieces in the ring, but he can melt your heart as well. And we again would like to thank Butcher of Paul Vachon. Another TNT, another segment of fan mail where Lord Alfred Hayes asks questions written by you, answered by Vince McMahon. The only thing worse than hearing what the fans have to say is sitting through another boring WWF update. Regardless, I'm all ears. The first fan demands that Jimmy Superfly Snuka receive a title shot for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. First of all, Superfly needs to earn his title shot, unless of course he goes the Chief Wahoo McDaniel route and cries racism. Second of all, this is question time, not demand your personal fantasy booking time. Why don't you leave that to the professionals? The second fan asks whether or not a wrestler known as Red Bastine is still active. When was the last time you watched the WWF? 1952? No, he is not active. However, Vince McMahon does say that occasionally Red will come out of retirement to act as a special guest referee. The third question, well, I mean, technically, I guess the second question asks, who's younger, Big John Studd or Sergeant Slaughter? As to which individual would be the younger, I don't know. How do you not know, McMahon? Aren't these people supposed to be your employees? And secondly, aren't you supposed to be a broadcast journalist? Why don't you try doing some journalism and, you know, studying your subject? Big John Studd was born on February 19th, 1948 while Sergeant Slaughter was born on August 27th of the very same year. The next guest on Tuesday Night Titans is an all-time great in and outside of the ring in the form of Gorilla Monsoon, who comes out to live jazz music played by the same band that Paul Vachon performed with earlier. Apparently, Gorilla Monsoon was the very first amateur wrestling American allowed to tour the country of Russia way back in 1959. You have to remember, even in 1984, the Cold War between East and West was still going very strong. So the fact that an American was allowed to tour the country of the Soviet Union's biggest member is something spectacular. Even the Russians respected Gorilla. Knowing of his storied amateur career, Vince McMahon then asked Gorilla Monsoon when he decided to turn pro. And according to the man himself, he was working as a teacher when a friend of his called him up and asked him, have you ever considered turning pro? The rest, as they say, is bull crap. I've lived my entire life as a pro wrestling fan, yet not one of my friends has ever called me up to ask, hey Tyler, you want a career change? We're then shown footage of a match from 1977 between Gorilla Monsoon himself and his longtime rival in Baron Mikel Sekuna. Muhammad Ali, the professional boxer and pretty much most famous boxer of all time, is sitting ringside as the match gets underway. The Baron attacks Monsoon once the match begins from behind and almost immediately gets sent outside of the ring, prompting Muhammad Ali to get involved for some reason while the Baron gets counted out. And there's Muhammad Ali standing up, pointing his finger at Gorilla Monsoon. Ali's coming in the ring, and Muhammad Ali is in the ring. Ali gets into the ring, takes his shoes off, and then challenges Gorilla Monsoon to an impromptu wrestling match. So Gorilla simply lifts Ali onto his shoulders and gives him an airplane spin before dumping the boxer onto the mat, who then turns tail and runs backstage like a coward. 
an even younger Vince McMahon than we're used to in 1984, then catches Gorilla Monsoon for a quick interview and wants to know what Monsoon's thoughts are on Muhammad Ali's actions just now. Gorilla says that while Muhammad Ali might be a great boxer, he has no place in a wrestling ring. This isn't Smokin' Joe Frazier or Cleveland Williams, this is Gorilla Monsoon. Back to 1984 now, Gorilla Monsoon then talks about the differences between professional wrestling and other sports, saying that once other athletes get into a professional wrestling ring, they usually quickly find themselves out of their element. Unfortunately, it won't be the last time that we see a celebrity, athlete or not, get into the ring and make a complete clown of themselves. Unlike Paul Vachon, or even Gorilla Monsoon, the next guest of Tuesday Night Titans comes out to jeers, which sounds like a bunch of unpaid interns sitting in the audience, as Captain Lou Albano emerges. <laughs> McMahon wants to know how being so unpopular with the loser fans feels. And you know what? The captain doesn't care. Why? I don't live by applauds or by booze. I live by the green, brother. Money. Vince then tries to get under Captain Albano's skin by saying that he's been spending more time in the world of music lately than pro wrestling, and asks Captain Albano, what do you know about music? <laughs> Eat your shorts, McMahon. See, if you had have taken my earlier advice and done your damn research, you wouldn't look like such an idiot right now. Captain Lou Albano, that was beautiful. The attention is then turned onto Cindy Lauper, and Vince McMahon wants to know, straight from Captain Albano himself, how much truth there is to the fact that he says he is Cindy Lauper's actual manager. Take a moment and pretend that you're Cindy Lauper. Your band, Blue Angel, is nothing more than a distant memory, so you're forced to work in seedy restaurants and sing at disgusting bars, hoping and praying that someone out there will notice you. Thankfully, one cold, dark, rainy night after you've just finished a set at some place known simply as the Pulsing Pustule, in he walks. Captain Lou Albano. And then the next thing you know, you're releasing She's So Unusual, and your whole world changes. On the other hand, we have David Wolf, who claims that no, he is the real manager of Cindy Lauper, and he comes out to the TNT set wearing sunglasses indoors for some reason. Yeah, okay, like I'm gonna take the word of some seedy, untrustworthy cab driver. David Wolf tells Vince McMahon that Captain Lou Albano has nothing to do with Cyndi Lauper's career, other than play a bit part in some of her music videos. Going further, David Wolf says that Captain Lou Albano has taken this so far that he went to Portrait Records' main headquarters and has begun demanding royalties. Okay, pal, whatever you say. Realizing that David Wolf's accusations are just as outlandish as his fashion sense, Vince McMahon then changes gears and asks what he and Cindy Lauper hope to accomplish with the recent challenge outlined by the pop star herself. You see, Cindy Lauper has challenged Captain Lou Albano to a wrestling match, but that match will not be between the two of them personally. Instead, they've both gone out and picked a representative. While Cindy Lauper has chosen Wendy Richter to be her representative, Captain Lou Albano has chosen current WWF Women's Champion, the Fabulous Moolah. Moolah means money, so that's where I'm placing all my bets, folks. David Wolf then finally answers Vince McMahon's question and says that what he and Cindy Lauper hope to accomplish is to prove to Captain Lou Albano that a woman's place is more than just being barefoot pregnant in a kitchen, as well to destroy Captain Albano fully and complete. Well, we're gonna show him the bad principle. We're gonna show him that he's gonna get beaten, annihilated, and destroyed. Whoa, 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 David. You're threatening violence on a man who's not even going to be actively competing in the ring? You sure are a piece of work, pal. 
The threat incenses Captain Lou Albano, who has been standing by since he recently conducted an interview with Vince McMahon himself, and the two get into a verbal altercation. <laughs> and yes, we're gonna kick his butt. What? You know what? You and that little whip, that lousy liar, that snake Cindy Lauper, get out of here, you! But of course, that snake David Wolf worms his way in so that security escorts Captain Lou Albano out of the building, rather than the guy who literally just threatened physical assault. That man is going to go down in Madison Square Garden. Shut up, David. You're a sheep in wolf's clothing. Sergeant Terry Daniels is the final interview of Tuesday Night Titans, and he comes out to music that can be identified as something, but not something that I would ever associate with a Marine or a Cobra Corps commando. What does being the first conscript into the Cobra Corps mean to Sergeant Terry Daniels? A lot, apparently. Lord, how would you assess the capabilities of Terry Daniels? Um, I think he has a wonderful future in front of him, and what an honor to be inducted into the Cobra Corps. Uh, here comes Lord Buttkisser again. According to Sergeant Daniels, he and Sergeant Slaughter look out for each other, and their trust for one another is absolute. We're then shown footage of Sergeant Slaughter visiting the Statue of Liberty and talking to random citizens, all while carrying Old Glory herself, the American flag. The point of the entire video is to show just how awesome the United States is as Sergeant Slaughter leads a bunch of kids through the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. You may call it a pledge, I call it propaganda. That brings us to the end of Tuesday Night Titans. Just who is David Wolf? And where does he get off spouting lies and issuing literal threats to someone the likes of Captain Lou Albano? Captain Albano is a man that has proven time and again that he understands professional wrestling inside and outside of the ring. And now after tonight's Tuesday Night Titans has proven that he understands music inside and outside of the studio. But we're supposed to take the word of David Wolf who wears sunglasses inside, lies blatantly, has hair that makes CM Punk's look like Fabio's, and probably smells like B.O. What I'm trying to say here is that Captain Lou Albano has never given us a reason to doubt him. So why are all of you doubting him when he says that he made Cindy Lauper? The truth hurts. Thank you for tuning in to another special episode of Tyler Vance Rants. Don't forget to like the video, hit the bell, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can also follow me on social media where there is plenty of wrestling fun for you to have. And please, I hope you will share it with your family and friends. That's it for me for now. I'll see you soon. So long for now. Going further, David even says that Captain Lou Albano went to, what's the record mean? Portrait records. Realizing David Wolf's accusations are just as out as more than just barefoot pregnant in the kitchen. And also something else that I forgot.